Uh, we have a special class for you. You're more than welcome to join that. For those of you moms that are here, for those of you that are with your moms today, welcome. For those of you that are thinking about your moms, right? And for you moms that are thinking about your kids, a special, special day today. But I believe that this is something today as we move forward is going to be a blessing to everyone. I would like to say a special happy Mother's Day to the mother of my children, my bride, Jenny Belay. Happy Mother's Day. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. I want you to know that this church is full of women and mothers yeah. who fear the Lord, who reflect who he is, reflect yeah. his love, reflect his grace. I want to thank you for that because it builds a healthy, strong church. Amen. Amen. We love each and every one of you. Take a quick moment to listen to this video and enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning, everybody, and happy Mother's Day. My name is Mimi, and I'd like to share some announcements with you before we get to the next part of the service. If you have a high school or college graduate, we will have a special graduate blessing service next Sunday. You will have the opportunity to say a special blessing over them during either of our church services. You can register to participate at lakeshorechurch.life. Kids Church is celebrating the end of the school year Friday, May 31st from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. We will have a water slide, so wear a swimsuit, bring a towel, and a change of clothes. Pizza, snacks, and drinks will be provided. There are more important details on the registration at lakeshorechurch.life. Starting in June, Wednesday night service will move to 6.30 p.m. The service will remain one hour so everyone can get home a little earlier. You can check out the announcements page or the events page at lakeshorechurch.life for details on all of our upcoming events and church happenings. Before we get to the sermon, Pastor Victor has a special giving message to share with you. Good morning, Lakeshore Church. I hope that you're enjoying service already. This morning, I just want to encourage you to do this one thing. Give God your best. I'm sure you gave God your best in worship this morning. Give God your best in your tithe and your offering this morning as well. There's many ways that you can give. If you're online with us this morning, you can go to lakeshorechurch.life and you can find in the toolbar our giving page and you can make contribution there. If you're with us here in the church this morning, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen and it will take you directly to our giving page online. Or if you want to go old school with a check, you can go ahead and put that in the envelope and you can find one of the contribution boxes that are in the sanctuary or out in the foyer. Now, why am I encouraging you to give your best? Well, it, it kind of comes from the story found in Genesis 4, where Abel gave of the best of his flock to the Lord. He actually gave the first and the best of his flock. He was a shepherd. And it says that God was pleased with that offering. There is something about giving God the first 10% that you make. Not the last 10%, but the first. Because it really shows and demonstrates your love and your faith and trust in Him. So as you give this morning, give of your best and your first 10%. Now, prepare your heart to hear a word from God. Mimi, a hand, let me just tell you, for those of you that don't know who Mimi is, Mimi is uh, a a high school graduate as of recently. Her mom leads our worship. And, and you know, sometimes we, we, we don't realize that, man, Jennifer is a mom of two right? She's got two sweet girls that Tara, who works in our office, is a mother of, a, of a, an older son who's, uh, his name is Seth. He's not living in the home anymore, but Macy goes everywhere with Tara. Amanda has three boys, and I'm appreciative of all that she does for us. These are important moms, right? You know that Miss Molly, she's got uh, three, uh, three girls and uh, a son, man, and that's a blended family, and I love to see that. And so today, I wanted to bless our staff moms. You know, sometimes uh, they do a lot for us, and I'm impressed by all of their abilities. Sometimes it's ministering to you, and sometimes it's putting the calendar together or making sure that we stay on budget or adding something, you know, doing something for the church. But one of the greatest things that impresses me about the ladies that are on our staff are how much they care for their children. When we sit down and we go over prayer requests, I always say, how can I pray for you? Every time it has something to do with their children. And so you know what? I know that these t-shirts that I'm about to get say made to lead. 
And we know that men, as, as wives and as, as, as moms, we get it, right? Well, the, the man's supposed to be the spiritual leader of the household, just so you know. Everybody knows who wears the pants in my family, right? She's really good. And all of our staff wives are really good at making uh, their husbands think that they're in leadership. But we all know who's really leading. Amen. And so, you know what? Give our, give, I want to give Miss Molly a hand. Can, can Miss Molly come and get a T-shirt real quick, right? Where's Miss Jennifer at? Did Miss Jennifer step out? She does, she's not even getting, can you make sure that Jennifer gets hers? You know what? Give Miss Jennifer a hand, even though she's not in here to hear it. Oh, Molly, hold on. I gave you the wrong one. I gave you Amanda. Switch up. There you, there's yours. Miss, everybody give Miss Amanda a hand. She was, let me just tell you, it's one thing to lead a, a group of little girls, but she's got to lead her three boys Actually, four, because he's working at my house right now, and he is a, definitely a child. <laughs> and, and then, of course, uh, you guys know uh, Miss Tiffany, who has stepped up now. Not only is she the, uh, the wife of our associate and has done so much for us in our children's department, but she is now running our Mother's Day Out program here at Lakeshore Church. <laughs> Give Miss Tiffany Kennison a hand. And... Uh, I bought these. If you're looking at these t-shirts and you're like, these are cheesy, Pastor Brian. You couldn't have gotten us something better than this. I bought this at the lead conference when we were there. So it's like AG stuff. And how about uh, the queen of, of the Belak household, Miss, Miss Jennifer Belak? You know, a lot can be said. I know that everybody is waiting for the moment that some kind of a way I incorporate uh, one of my hobbies into the message, whether it's a motorcycle hobby or whether, because I've got a lot of interest. I think every man should. At times when I was hunting, when I was fishing, and that was my hobby, and now you guys know that I'm into bees and chickens, and I had somebody drop off a hive the other day. All of my hives are calm hives. I have three of them. About to have four. They're all pretty calm. And man, I can go up. My granddaughter and I can go up. The hive is right here. We know not to stand in front, but we can watch them bring all the stuff in. I I had a buddy of mine, Mr. Steve Reed, our local tree guy, found a a hive in in one of the trees he was taking down. He's like, I got a hive. I'm bringing it to the church. And man, he put that thing down and he had it screened over so they couldn't get in and out while they were traveling. We took that screen off. And if you were by that hive without a, you, I would be in the hospital right now, right? They call it a hot hive. Y'all stay away from the corner over there where the bees are on the property. And what I found out is this, that a hot, agitated hive, there's reasons for that. Sometimes it's because they can't get the resources they need, but most of the time, it is because of the demeanor and personality of the queen. (laughs) All right, listen. (laughs) Don't get upset with me. They literally say that if you want to change the personality of a hive, you have to change out the queen. Now, we're not changing out queens because, because queens are there and they can stay, you know. But how many of you know that a lot of the times, look at Jenny's like, you're going to leave that out in the second service. <laughs> what? No, ma'am, that's going in. I'm going to elaborate on it in the second service now. (laughs) No, but we know that the temperature of our home, you know, our our moms will dictate that. I'm so grateful for my mom. Most of you guys know just personally, this is my first Mother's Day without my mom, and I miss her terribly. But I am so incredibly thankful for all that she has done for me, all that the moments of her love that she poured into me. I'm forever indebted to her care for me. And I know that for you guys, this is, you know, you have got to understand that this is an incredible day 
where we recognize those who have the largest influence in our lives. Every one of us in here has a mother. No one can say that they didn't have a mom. Now, some of it is biological, and maybe, maybe your mom wasn't involved in your life, but I want you to know that, man, our moms are important, and what you do is important. Some of you came in here exhausted today because you're tired because of all of the pressures of being a mom. My dad sent me something last night, and I sent him a text and said, I miss mom terribly, but I'm grateful for who, who she is and who, who she was and what she did. And his response is, you are who you are today because of your mother. And you know what? He's right. Now, of course, my dad played a, a huge part in my life. I've got my mother's dreams. I've got my father's eyes, right? You, I, they are forever part of who I am. But I started thinking about my daughter who just graduated from college and will be, uh, will be saying a blessing over her next week, even though she doesn't want us to. But I started thinking, man, what got her there? Who got her there? And I know I played a small part, but I can tell you when she needed help, when she needed the encouragement, all of my girls, they know that they can depend on their mom. And then jokingly, as we were taking some pictures, my mother-in-law, Jenny's mom, put on, uh, put on my, my daughter's graduation cap and gown. And it's fitting because I think June now knows as much about nursing as my daughter does because June was her study buddy at those late 12 hour, 12, you know, 12 midnight hour study times for a test. There's something to be said about mothers, about grandmothers, about great grandmothers, about mothers who, who have taken on children that aren't even theirs. You guys are amazing. And I want you to know that I appreciate you for those who have adopted children, for those who are fostering children. My goodness, you deserve to be recognized when it comes to motherhood, the sign on a church bulletin board said it all. If evolution is true, how come mothers only have two hands? Right? Seriously. Today we stop to salute our moms and let you know how much we appreciate you. Some days you probably wonder if what you're doing even matters. Your work is never done. You're always exhausted and there's no big financial reward. We live in an age that it seems to diminish service and exalt glitz. Sometimes it's hard to value the investment that you are placing in your children. I don't know how you do it. Passing yourself, coming and going. You got your t-shirt. Happy Mother's Day, Jennifer bringing this one there, this one there. And every now and then you call your husband and like, can you get somebody somewhere? Because man, it's, it's just, and all of that, while everything's going on, the emotional, the physical, the, the, all of it, the spiritual. Sometimes it's hard to value your, your investment, but know this. God says that you are highly esteemed by him today. If you don't feel highly esteemed by your children today, you have to know that you are highly esteemed by God himself today, mom, grandma, great grandma. In Psalms 127.3, now listen to this. This is Eugene Patterson paraphrases Solomon's word in the message. If you think that the message is a version of the Bible that you should get, because you heard somebody say that the, the message version is a good version, do not see it as a version because it is not a version of the Bible. It is a paraphrase written by this man who paraphrased the Bible. It is not a translation of the Bible. Just throwing that out there. But I thought it was interesting because he paraphrases Solomon's words in the message by, by describing a mother as someone who senses the worth of her work 
is diligent in homemaking. This is all in Proverbs. Proverbs 31. As I say it, you're going to recognize it. Proverbs 31, 18 through 19. And you, you can put that up there. But listen, so we know this. Psalm 127, 3. Children are a heritage from the Lord. But look, in, and you can read it. Read it with me. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp doesn't go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the, to the this staff and her hand holds the spindle. This is a paraphrase by somebody who broke it down. She says she senses the worth of her work, diligent in homemaking, faces tomorrow with a smile, has something worthwhile to say, and always says it kindly. Her children respect her and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. And then he finishes the chapter with these words. Many women have done wonderful things, but you've outclassed them all. You as a mom have outclassed the greats in the world that we see. You are responsible for the lives that are touched by your children, the lives that are changed by your children. You have an opportunity like no other to do what your children need. Now in a world of AI, do you know I can get an AI sermon? Some of you are like, you should maybe think about that, Pastor Brian. But you can go to AI, artificial intelligence, and get everything done. Even, even physicians now, artificial intelligence. Everything is done by artificial intelligence. In other words, I don't have to think. I don't have to put the work in. And somebody else can come in and kind of do it for me and put it together, make videos, right? All of this stuff, man. I, I even saw that now there's a, a digital calendar for families. And, and your children can go up to this digital calendar and they can see their daily chores. And they can, you can put all of this stuff on there. And I'm like, come on. That's good, and I'm sure that it's helpful. But man, you don't want to lose the physical touch that cannot be replaced by AI. AI cannot rock your children to sleep at night. AI cannot go and crawl in bed with them because they're running a fever. AI cannot feed them a proper breakfast or give them Pop-Tarts <laughs> on the way to school. AI can't do that. And I can't sit down face to face and just talk and communicate with, with your children. There are things that are irreplaceable. Don't even try. Now, as we go to Proverbs 31, most people are like, Pastor Brian, don't do it. Don't bring that up because none of us measure up to Proverbs 31. And I think just what my wife said earlier, I believe that you need to give yourself more credit. Because I believe that you, you do. Even if when you feel like you're the worst mom, I want you to know that there are people that would, would love to have you as their mom. And there are, no, there are no transcripts. There are no books. There is nothing that anyone has written to help you do better what you are doing in your home on a daily basis. I'm always going to encourage you to pray for your kids. To know the word of God so that you can quote that to your kids. More than just the one verse that says, rebellion is of the sin of witchcraft. And right now, daughter... Right? To encourage them, to encourage yourself. There are a lot of denominations right now that are trying to shove out women leadership from the church. We embrace it here because I know the value of the, the female presence and decisions that we make and what we do. I value the ladies that speak into our lives, and I believe that they have the ability to do so. I just do. And, you know, just as much as I said, if it was a few weeks ago, or I remember talking even in front of a large group of, of, of pastors, and I said, you know what we've done? And you've heard me say this. We have developed... We've developed strategies and, and even doctrines around 
getting people delivered from evil spirits, but we have failed to get people possessed with the right spirit and sometimes right spirits. I came across a devotion today that I thought was very interesting because it said the spirit of motherhood. We all know about the spirit of fear we need to be delivered, the spirit of anxiety we need to be delivered, the spirit of anger, depression, the spirit of addiction, the spirit of lust, all of these that we need to be delivered from. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit brings in with it the good spirit that we need inside of us to accomplish the things that you're trying to accomplish. And there's an interesting scripture. It's found in Judges chapter 5, verse 7. John, I know that's weird going to the Old Testament, but it speaks of a judge. Her name was Deborah. Now, right after this very strange thing happened, the entire nation was saved by a woman who drove a tent peg into the temple of a a bad guy while he slept. You can go and read that. I'm just throwing that out there because we got young ears. After the war was won, Deborah sung a song. In that song, she said this, village life ceased. While the the nation that was coming up against Israel, they oppressed them and village life ceased ceased. People weren't in community. They weren't doing things. They they weren't able to enjoy life, village life, riding bikes, taking a walk, meeting with your neighbor, having crawfish boils, grilling for mom on, on Mother's Day. Village life stopped because the Israelites were oppressed. And listen to what she says, until I, Deborah, arose, arose a mother in Israel. She wasn't just the mother of Israel. She was the judge or the leader of Israel at the time. And so here we see that God raised up an incredible woman named Deborah to be the judge of Israel. An evil Canaanite leader by the name of King Jabin had oppressed, attacked, and enslaved the nation of Israel for 20 years. He was cruel, mate. He was cruel, he was mean, and he was wicked. He tried to destroy everything that Israel believed in. He wanted to force the people to worship multiple idol gods. The way he tried to control the people was by occupying the highways and the roads. And when the people traveled, it wasn't a safe journey. Families would be attacked and victimized. And this evil leader controlled where the people could go, even in the villages. The roads that this new oppressor offered them, they were dangerous The the things and the places that they wanted to take, they they would be in ruin, destroyed, decayed. The families of Israel, it it was dangerous to put your children in a wagon and go down these paths that the Canaanite culture had for them. And it was that kind of culture, Deborah said, I arose and took a stand as a mother of Israel. Although Deborah was known as a warrior and a prophetess, she said, paraphrased, I did not arise as a warrior. I did not arise as a judge. I didn't arise as a prophet. I looked at the village and realized that village life ceased, and I stepped in as a mother. I'm watching moms show up to libraries saying, my child will not read these books. I'm watching moms get together and pray together for the power of God to move in their schools, to move in their homes. Because Deborah didn't step up as a leader. She didn't step up as a judge. She didn't step up as anything other than a mother. It was like the spirit of mom came over and said, not in my village. We know that Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But look, this is Deborah's way of saying, as for me and my village, we will have peace. A child will ride their bike. I will talk to my neighbors. We will travel and not worry. As a mother, she said, I decided enough is enough. You're not going to send my, my babies down that road. That road won't lead to life, freedom, or victory. That road won't lead to God. And and it was as a mother who said, if if the men can't change the state of the nation and the direction that our children and our children's children are going, it's time for the mothers to stand up. Amen. 
There will come a time when you will need to step up to influence the path your children are taking in life, moms. You can just put some soaking music on just so I can pray because I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray for the moms because maybe some of you, you know, there, there's a, a funny reel where, you know, where a guy says something and then the, the, next, the next scene is he's in a coffin holding some roses, right? And there was a video like that where, where the husband, you know, has young kids and it's hard for, you know, that's where you step up and you make sure Mother's Day is good because, I mean, they can't do much. And, and, and the mother was kind of complaining saying, you know, it's Mother's Day. He said, I know. She said, well, I mean, did, did you get me anything? And he, he made the mistake of saying, well, you're, you're not my mother. And then the very next scene is he was in the coffin with roses, <laughs> right? <laughs> with that song going, because that is the worst. How dumb is that? If you said that, or if you're saying that, or if you're thinking that, there is a confessional in my office after this, <laughs> but it's going to cost you. You need to pray for a spirit of motherhood to come upon you with your children in today's world. And what they see and what they hear and what they experience, whether they are in your care or whether they are grown and they are out of your home. Pray for the spirit. Now, men, you don't pray for a spirit of motherhood unless you have to. Maybe mom's not in the picture and you're having to double up duties. And I get that. Your children always need you to be a man. They need you to be masculine, but sometimes, right? But for you ladies that are in here and your moms and your grandmothers, you need to pray for the spirit of motherhood to come upon you. It's a spirit of protection. It's a spirit of provision. It's a spirit of of care that when your child's heart is broken, your heart breaks that when your child is is victorious you are victorious with them a spirit of motherhood that says I'm not just worried about the physical and emotional well-being of my children but if I don't teach them how to pray who will if I don't teach them how to love others when they're not loved who will and your children are bullied every day. Not everybody. Some of your kids are the bullies. We'll pray for you too. But you know what? You step in in those moments because your, their pain is your pain. And the spirit of motherhood first turns to God before they do anything. The spirit of motherhood says, Lord, I need you to come into me, to strengthen me so that I can be who who I need to be for my kids and now for my grandkids or maybe some of you for your great grandkids. Maybe some of you for your future kids. See? (laughs) Some of you have, if you're going through it because you hurt for your children right now, I'm about to pray with you and pray for you. Some of you have had children that have moved on and they're not serving the Lord. And as a mother, and as that spirit of motherhood comes out, you find that you're praying for that more than ever. Some of you have taken on kids and children and and man, you are struggling because you weren't there to nurture them at the beginning, but now you're there and you're trying to help them with a massive adjustment. And sometimes you just lose help and sometimes you just need help and you call out to God today I want to pray with you today you wonder am I really godly enough am I really doing all that God wants and to be honest with you I don't know if anybody can honestly say yes to that I don't think that there is anyone in here that has reached that level of perfection We make mistakes. Sometimes we stumble. 
Sometimes it's us that do the hanging up. Golly, you remember when we used to say it's us when we hang up. You know, I miss those days when you can slam a phone down. It's just not the same when you press that button really hard. It's just not the same. You know? But in the end, I want you to know that through it all, God has graced you with the ability to be who you are. Because out of the millions of people on the billions of people on the face of this planet, some way, somehow, for some reason, God chose you to be the mother of the children that you call yours. You could have chosen anyone, but you were chosen. And may today that spirit, that Holy Spirit, cover you and protect you and encourage you strengthen you in your moments of weakness may he be there to forgive you to encourage you to pick you up and help you move when you need him to may he get other moms to come to your rescue to help you but today my prayer is that you would be honored be strengthened and that you would allow the Holy Spirit do in your life what he needs to do in you because the greatest gift that you will give your sons and your daughters is a healthy vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ that's the greatest gift that you'll give and so I want to pray for our moms today And I don't even know how to because sometimes it gets it gets crazy but my prayer is Lord is that as crazy as the world gets whether your kids are not even in school yet pre-k toddlers maybe they're in elementary or middle or junior or maybe they're in high school or in college or maybe they're out I just want to pray today that God would give you the passion for your kids, the way Deborah was passionate about what she saw as her children in the nation of Israel. And may you rise up. Now, I know that sounds awfully arrogant with what Deborah said. It was almost like she was saying, you know what? They're lucky to have me as a mother. And I don't think that you're being arrogant. I believe that your kids are lucky to have you as a mom. I believe they are. And I don't think it's arrogant for you to think that. I think it's okay for you to step up, to be the, do your best to help protect, to help provide. Where's the dad and all this, Pastor Brian? We're getting to them in June. <laughs> but I believe that there's something to it. Right? What are they learning? What are they learning here? Are they learning enough here? Are you taking the, the paperwork that Pastor G gives you home and reiterating what they learned here? You're like, do they have that? Yes. All week long, you can go over scripture with your kids and what they're learning here. And trust me, they will learn more from you in those moments than they will from the teachers that are in there. Some of the greatest moments with my mom they weren't teachable moments. They were just times going shopping at Walmart. When Walmart was first over where Office Depot is, tells you how old I am. And I would go there with my mom. I hated shopping, but I enjoyed being with her. My mom would go shopping, man. We would, Christmas time, we'd go shopping over at Lakeview. We would get there and drink Orange Julius waiting for the shops to open. We would leave when they're turning the lights out, locking the doors, and we would leave with nothing. <laughs> One item. Like, are you kidding me? But, but you know what? It's those moments that I remember. It was the moments when mom was on the sidelines during my soccer games or 
dropping me off for catechism. I was a mama's boy. There's no doubt my dad will tell you that. My mom had to come and rescue me from third grade many times because Brian was having a crying fit for whatever reason. But I loved my mom. I still do. I always will. I want to encourage you. Did my mom feel like she was a perfect mom? Probably not. But in my eyes and in my sister's eyes, in her grandchildren, no, she wasn't perfect. But no one would ever be able to say that they weren't loved and that she wasn't there if they needed her. And yes, she offered her opinion. Sometimes it was spicy. Not all the time welcome. But man, it's changed our lives. May God give you the strength today. To have the, we call it the spirit of Jezebel. We like to even name it because Jezebel was an evil woman. Well, then, then maybe we should start praying not against the spirit of Jezebel, but start praying for the spirit of Deborah. Or the spirit of Hannah. Or the spirit of Mary. We like, well, no, that's weird, Pastor Brian. Well, you know what? We attribute a spirit to this other wicked woman. How about we start attributing good things and good qualities with the good woman of the, of the Bible? Yes. You can start labeling your wife or your mom. She's got the spirit of Hannah. I mean, she's got the, the spirit of Mary, the spirit of Deborah, the spirit of Esther, who was... Moses' mother-in-law that played the tambourine. She's got the spirit of Miriam. Because every time we went to church, she worshiped. I want to pray that God would give you the right spirit and that you would be willing to receive that right spirit. And that God would help you as you pray for your children. The ones that are there and the ones that aren't. The ones that are a struggle and the ones that aren't. You know what's this, the bad thing is this. Your good kids and your bad kids, they both smile. And most of the time, you can't tell the difference between them. You think you can. You know, you just got to be there for them. And so if you would, right now, I'd like for everybody to stand up. If you are by your mother, I want you to go by your mother. Miss Ava, if you could come and just wrap your arms around Miss, Miss Anna, because I'm going to pray for both of you. If, you're, if your kids aren't here, your spouse isn't here, you find somebody to get with because we're all family. You just get together, man, and yeah. Good boy, Isaac. He's the fourth child that Amanda has to deal with. <laughs> He is a great man of God, and I'm thankful for him. However, the singing that he does, it, it's funny. I just want to pray right now for you. Because I just think, we're going to take pictures. I want, I want you guys to make sure that Giovanna finds you. We've got treats for you on the way out. Enjoy them. They were expensive. Don't let your kids eat them. They're for you. Do not let your husbands eat them. They're for you. But I just want to pray because, man, right now the world needs strong fathers and father figures. There's a reason that we have riots on our college campuses. A lot of it is because there's a father figure that is non-existent. And that usually impacts the mother's ability. So, Father, I'm just coming right now, and I'm thankful for this family. I'm thankful for my physical family. Lord, my physical family has many mothers in it, grandmothers and great-grandmothers. And, Lord, this church family is a lot like that. Here we have mothers-to-be. We have foster moms, adopted moms. We have moms with young children. We have moms, Lord, with, with kids that are that are in middle school and junior high, moms with kids in high school, some in college, and, and some, Lord God, that are, are still waiting for a phone call from a child that's afar off. 
But Lord, nonetheless, my prayer is that the mothers of this church wouldn't be known with, because of their bad qualities, but they would be known because of their good. And Lord, people would look at the moms that are here, their children, they rise up to call her blessed. Because that's what Proverbs 31 says. That even their husbands will declare their blessings over them. And may they look at their moms and say, you have the spirit of, and fill it in with a, a godly character from your word. Maybe it's a spirit of Martha because mom can't stop cleaning up or preparing dinner. Or maybe it's the spirit of Mary because she loves to sit at your feet. Worship you. Or maybe it's the spirit of Deborah that is strong and isn't afraid to go to war. It's not afraid to fight or the spirit of Hannah that makes promises to you and keeps those promises. My prayer, Lord God, is that these ladies that are in this place today would be strengthened. Lord God, their heart would be filled with joy today. Even the ones who can't be with their kids today, filled with joy for the time that they've had pouring into their kids, ministering to them. And Lord, offering them a gift. It's possibly the, the greatest gift that they'll give. And their children will never even know that they're giving that gift. It's the powerful gift of a praying mom who intercedes for her children in times that those children aren't there. They don't even know it. But God, their mom is praying. So no matter what the situation is, bless them today encourage them today and may they all have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding them and protecting them and providing for them as they so effortlessly do the same for their kids in Jesus' name and everyone said amen. come on amen give our moms a hand in this place hey once again we want to say thanks for joining us uh, our prayer is that you felt the presence of God, that you allowed him to speak to you uh, through today's message. But we want you to know that if you need to contact us, you can do that at lakeshorechurch.life. If you gave your life to Jesus Christ today because of today's message, I would love for you to contact us here at Lakeshore. Give us your address. Uh, let us send you some information. I would even love to send you a Bible. Call us, contact us, email us, some kind of a way get in touch with us. If you'd like to give to our ministry, you can also find out how to do that at our website, lakeshorechurch.life. We pray that this is an incredibly blessed week for you, for your family, and uh, we'd love to see you join us again. But until the next time, God bless, and uh, we'll see you.